Hey, Peter. Hey, Adam. What do you know about the bass? Da bass? Da bass, D-A-B-A-S-S. I know. Then you're going to fit right in with today's lesson. Oh, yeah. I'm Adam Annis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear Podcast. Music advice coming at you. Coming at you today. We are sponsored by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com for all your jazz lessons needs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Peter, you know what we're talking about today. Yes, I'm, I do. I'm very, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I was bluffing. No, I, it was a rhetorical was question because I know you <laughs> didn't know what I know. we were talking I, I about. Was trying to, I was trying to trick you. Didn't but work. this is going to be one of these fun uh, episodes where, like, I brought in something for Peter, and Peter just gets to react to whatever I've brought in. So yeah. I love these. Yeah. I had an idea, though, because uh, we've been working on some really cool bass lines on the guided practice sessions on YouTube. Yes. Just various tunes that I've been, I've been doing over the past couple months, and I've just noticed, like, so many iconic tunes are centered around an iconic bass line, mm. right? And so I thought we could cover the seven iconic, most iconic even. I, it's not in the title, but I'll even say it. These are the seven most iconic bass lines. And we could talk about why you should learn them, even if you don't play bass. Like, what if you don't play bass? Do you need to know the bass line to uh, uh, something like Footprints or something like Chameleon? Yeah, yes, you yes, do. Yes, you do. Even if you are a singer or a yes. saxophonist, or especially if you're a pianist or a guitarist, you got to know this stuff because it's just so crucial to these iconic tunes. So we've got seven iconic tunes lined up and seven bass lines that go with them. We also have a PDF you could check out in the description here. Uh, go check that out and you can download that for free and follow along. For our YouTube folks, we're going to put up some notation here on the video itself. But there's still a PDF uh, to grab for your your pleasure to take home. Okay. So, yeah, I'm excited, man. I am too. Should we get right into it? Let's get right into it. So we have our first uh, iconic bass line. Now, this is something we covered uh, just a couple weeks ago here on the podcast when we were talking about iconic intros. Yes. Uh, because this is an iconic intro. And actually, this is kind of what sparked this particular episode. This is from uh, Charlie Parker, The Complete Savoy Sessions. And uh, this is the intro to Savoy Dizzy. Savoy or Savoy? Well, uh, either way. Okay. Uh, I, I pronounce it uh, Savoy. <laughs> Savoy. <laughs> Savoy. That's a very severe way to say Savoy. The complete Savoy sentence. Uh, yeah, boy. This is, of course, Dizzy Gillespie's A Night in Tunisia. Is it Tunisia Tun or Tunisia? Tunisia. So again, I think we were corrected on that. I think you're correct on that. I don't know. But this is A Night in Tunisia. I have the, uh, the notation there so you can follow along. This is an iconic bass line, and this is one that everyone really needs to know. Here we go. Correctly. Like, can, I, sorry, this is not, again, we're already off topic, but can we just listen to where the drummer puts that roll in the groove here in this, like, yeah. check that out. Listen to where the sorry, roll. Sorry, I was noodling there. Oh, good, dude. No, please. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a noodler encourager. So check out where the drummer, check out how the drummer feels this. It's amazing. Yep. I don't know who's playing drums on this, actually. Man, it feels so good. It drives. It comes in. It's both driving and setting within it at the same time. For some reason, in my head, it's a little later than where he's actually playing it, mm -hmm. and where he's playing it is much better <laughs> than what I'm hearing. So. Right. Amazing. So yeah. So this is a very, and this was actually a very common uh, thing in our intros. It's it's just an ostinato, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked about how some how people, different it is than most people play it. <laughs> but this is what they're yep, actually playing. Absolutely. And it's just two chords, E flat seven. And just throughout that E flat, e flat seven, uh, the bass line just goes up that E flat major arpeggio. Yep. To the seventh. Yep. And then that, that little chromatic note below. And then that's up a D minor sixth arpeggio. Yep. Which is really interesting. So, and we're gonna see this a couple times actually on this on this episode. Same rhythmic figure, mm -hmm. but different pattern mm. to the chord and yep. even to the arpeggio. Yep. Yeah. 
Good stuff. So that's our first one. I would consider that an iconic bass line, right? Man, it doesn't get any more. Like, I mean, one way to kind of gauge the iconography oh, of nice. these... Uh, of of these bass lines is you didn't make up that word but you might have made up the context <laughs> just now i don't know i might have made a both see um no is that the if you were to think about you know an architectural analysis of the tune and the th or even like a thematic analysis if, if you know is the bass line as or perhaps even more important than the so-called melody you know like in terms of like that's a night in Tunisia. Like yeah. what? What? What makes people say that's a night in Tunisia? Is it the bass line? Is it the drum groove? Or is it? I think it's all of those things. It's all of them. I mean, but equally, I mean, like when a bass line rises to the level of of at least being in the in the in the discussion, yeah. that means something. I agree. I totally agree. Now, but why? Why do you think it's important? Why do you learn so many bass lines? Because you know all these. Why do you learn? Why is it important to learn these if you don't play the bass? Uh, because I like to play solo piano, That's and true. a lot of times bass players aren't available. Yeah, they're a little bit undependable. Let's let well, they're not undependable. They're, they're busy. They're just busy. They're they, busy. They're so. double booked. <laughs> they're most nights of the booked. week. Yeah, they're double bass. They're double booked. Um, no, but I think that this really gets to that area of like even if you're not covering some of these bass lines, it's like the kind of thing of like why learn some basic drum grooves? Why I always tell pianists, I'm like you should be able to sit down at the drums. And do ding 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 ding, ding, ding. so that you under so that you was that a train that yeah. just drifted Sound by? Like there was a tra ghost train. A train. Yeah. Um that you're able to play the basics of the instruments that you want to play with. Yeah. So that even if you never double them or try to play this bass line, even if you always have a great bass player there to play it, you don't really it, it heightens your sense of complimentary playing if you know what they're doing and you can actually do it yeah. and play it even though if you're not playing it because now you know how to play everything around it yeah now you know how to play with that you know what i mean absolutely so it's like it's just like being a um you know a good teammate on on uh, i don't know like you're playing tennis doubles and maybe you're the, always the one is this one person always in the back and the others in the front sometimes or like yeah. volleyball it or whatever. can be yeah. yeah 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 but you still have to know how to do that other thing because you're playing with them you're going to be passing it you gotta to know them what they're doing you got to know what they're yeah. doing and and to go next level and this is i think a lot of times why we don't get you know necessarily hung up on these concepts of like oh you're a professional player or amateur i'm like i don't see because i've heard some amateurs so-called amateurs, self-described amateurs that play so much better or more advanced than a so-called pro player. It's not about those titles, but I would say that if you want to go next level or pro level, whatever you're going to call it, like these are those kind of things. You learn everybody's part. You don't just learn yeah. your part. You learn every part. The way that a conductor, a great conductor, For sure. approaches... Like, on the one hand, they're the only ones not playing anything. Right. But they need to know every single part. And I've been around some of these conductors. They can just sit down at the piano and, like, look at the score. And, yeah. Because they know it. Yeah. They know it. And so part of knowing it is being able to play it, I And think. that's true for everybody improvising. So if you play saxophone, why is it important that you know the bass line to A Night in Tunisia if you're going to play A Night in Tunisia? We talk about, like, basing your improvisations off the melody. But then you just mentioned, is this bass line just as important as right. the melody? So if you're gonna if you're gonna solo, like uh, give me a little give me a little Night Tunisia accompaniment okay. here, and I'll, I'll solo. So if you're gonna solo on the melody, like around the melody, right? The melody is right. You can use the melody to kind of base your solo off of. Like if you're gonna do things like that. Right, I'm using the melody right. melody, but I could also use the bass line. Keep going right. there. Like that's all just getting information from the bass line. I'm thinking about the shapes, I'm thinking about the rhythm of it. Yeah. Same thing with the drum part, like you said. Knowing all of the information is the best way the easiest way you don't have to think about anything new you don't have to create anything you're giving me like you're giving me that information <coughs> i can just take that even if i just take the rhythm yeah it gives me something to go off of you yeah. know what i mean yep absolutely so great so great yeah so next up man this is this next one is a lesson in how to play a very specific groove. Peter, can very. I get the right side of this opened up just a hair here? Yeah. Oh, he's so specific with oh, this. Oh, wait, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. That's me. 
I think I gotta go the other way. Okay, so this is Caravan by okay. the great Art Blakey. The Caravan. <laughs> this is Art Blakey's version of Caravan. The yeah. tune is by Juan Teasall, of course, from Duke Ellington's band. Uh, but this is Art Blakey's version of Caravan from the the album Caravan. If you don't know this album Caravan, holy oh, smokes! Oh man, you are in for a treat. It is so. You're good. welcome in advance. So this, to me, when I learned this bass line, it really unlocked this very particular groove that Art Blakey plays here. It can be kind of hard to feel your way through, but this bass line, I think they do a great job of setting up what this groove in. Yep. It, it's going to come about a minute in, but we're going to listen to the whole minute before because it's so oh, dang good. Art Blakey. Yeah, of course. Uh, intro. Iconic intro right here. Oh. Mm. This is some of the most stolen dude <laughs> drumming over the years. This is jazz phrasing right here. This is this crash here. Ah. Instant this, groove. This is the groove, right? Yeah. So getting to know this, if you get to know the bass line, here's a little setup bass line. Yeah. It's great. Is it going to that? It goes to the two and then the five. Ooh, After this. Freddy. It's a Freddie Hubbard on trouble. Curtis Fuller, I believe. Wayne Shorter. Cedar Walton. Yeah. I think this is Cedars and Ranger. I think it is Cedars and Ranger. Or maybe Blake. I mean. Ah. Come on. If you're near a piano right now, play along. GPS? What's going on? It just feels so good. That's it, man. That is so iconic on these background. We could actually oh, do a whole episode oh, on this arrangement. On. It's so man, good. This record. But so this groove here, like I said, go play along with it because it's just that 12 8 groove, right? That, that Blakey's playing through there. Man, it's what are you doing? I'm trying to be like Vanna White, just oh, highlighting, yeah. highlighting the letter. This, I promise you, if you if you are having a hard time feeling that, this opens it up in such a clear way and makes it just it just grooves so damn hard when you learn this, man. So this is what a bass line can do is really kind of unlock. And for pianists out there, like learning these one note at a time bass lines, so good for practicing like where you are in the groove, your time, yes. your hand independence, hand independence, all of that Finger stuff. independence and Absolutely. hand independence. Yeah. And you can look at the, learning these in two hands and then splitting them off and then eventually, you know. Yeah, see if you can play the melody eventually, you know. Peter's going right in on it. It's <laughs> tough, though. It's tough. It's not, not easy. Whew. And actually, on this one, a good thing for you guys to practice. So, and I'm glad you have it written in there because it's a cycle. I think of four times. Where it's ding, 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 ding. Yep. So you got to hear that. Like, really getting these bass lines locked in is as much about boom being able to count to feel that rest beat on ones. Ding, 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 ding. It's there. Yeah. But it's not played. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, next up, uh, unknown record i really i chose a kind of uh i went oh for boy. like an underdog so I what, what from is. miles davis is kind of blue <laughs> kind of what kind of blue also known as uh k-o-b k-o-b <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> i love that we started calling kind of blue they're all one syllable there's no reason to shorten it <laughs> yeah k-o-b k-o-b is, is the same amount of time no, it's, yeah it doesn't sound as hip and yet all, it's just as uh all of the explaining and discussion <laughs> around it is wasted more time than anything <laughs> that's right yeah well it adds to the charm and humor i suppose so. the veritable 
So uh, I'm surprised actually at how many instrumentalists who play this at, at a jam session don't know how to play the melody at all. Because the bass line is the melody exactly. in this case. So you might know, but yeah. can you do the, like very important to understand. Also, it's a very hit melody. Like it there's, is. it's a real melody. It's a really, it's fun to play on the piano. Great fingering yeah. if you can, yeah. yeah, in both keys. So let's, I mean, we, we have to play it. Yep. Do we have to play it? Yes. We, we have to play it. If we have any faults, it's that we reference this recording too often. This intro is going into our uh, our modal intros. Modal right intros yeah. of the 20th century. Yeah. I will be bringing in a camel cigarette next time we listen to this intro. <laughs> Uh. I'm noodling, sorry. Noodle away. It's only KOB. <laughs> KOB. Cobb. Jimmy KOB Cobb. He's a little pitchy on that, you know. <laughs> it's life, baby. It's the human, element. It's life, it's the human yeah. element, man. So again, the bridge is taking up a, a half step. We have that on the PDF. If you want to download the PDF and see the whole thing, you check it out. This is also one of the only songs in the real book that is correctly transcribed, I believe. Well, I, mean, I can't get this right. <laughs> okay, so... I mean, that is so beautiful, though, man. This is perfect. Yeah. So, one thing that you can't quite capture on the piano but is interesting to hear and to try to I think at least is the way the PC you know uh, plays because he slides up and yeah, because yeah. of the way he's the, he's fingering up in that third or fourth position whatever is that between the D and the E is doing and then he does the exact same fingering just slides up half a step so I yeah. think you can get close to it yeah I you know what so we have the PDF of all the bass lines here that you can download for free I'll also put when this is all over a link to the Spotify playlist and I encourage everybody to play along with these bass lines that's where you really get some right. stuff out well of depending it. on what state you're living in why yeah. Is that legal in all 50? To play along with the bass lines? Yeah. yeah. No, it actually, That's yeah. What I'm saying. In some northern states, you can't do that. That's right. That's yeah. right. Idaho, uh, Wyoming. <laughs> next up is one that I know you're familiar with, Peter. Yes. you made a whole video called Stop uh, Footprints, and I, that was some self-editing there. Stop. Stop farting up footprints, footprints I yeah. believe is what it was. And so I kind of stole your chart on this, which is, uh, it looks really nice here. But this is just Let's the baseline. Full screen on this. So full screen see. on that. Look at that. I gotta remember it. Oh yeah, of course. So there's some great stuff here. The first thing to note. So the baseline itself is easy enough, but check out there when it goes to the four chord. Yep. Uh, what Ron Carter doesn't do is go to F. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he knew that they were on the four chord. No. I mean, well, no, he does no, play kidding. an F. He, of, oh, course yeah, of course he does. <laughs> Right. But he doesn't put that. He keeps the C on the bottom. Wait, is it? I might have messed that up. No, it is C. Oh, it's C. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Here's footprints. Mm. Oh, that's intonation. Man, Ron, mm. Ron Carter is all over this episode. Yeah. Right? Woo. Come on, Herbie. Ah. Uh. Dopio. Man, those changes on the turnaround are amazing. Come on, Miles, stick to the melody. Ah. Uh. 
It's such a good baseline to know if you're a pianist because if you, I mean, and a bassist, really, yes. I, I encourage bass players to learn that baseline. I've been on, <laughs> I've been on a few too many sessions where the bass player didn't know this baseline. Well, I think, and the most common, big shout out to Gerald Clayton, by the way, at that master class for oh, reminding me how important singing, singing is for oh, sure. Come on, Super preach, important. and then. You know, going up to the four. Come on, bass players. Let's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's okay if you know. Like, you really need this reference point, though. That's the thing. I don't mean to be dogmatic. No, but you you can do it if you know the original. That's right. You know, back and forth. It's just such a different thing. Well, you know what's funny with all of these bass lines, and actually, especially the Ron Carter bass lines that we're going to listen to today. This being the the first edition, uh, it's not clearly stated every time yes. the same way, right? No. They they definitely are are messing around with them as the tune develops, and that's yeah. totally cool. Like that's fine, but. For us, as we're learning these tunes, we want to try to establish some kind of reverence for the original bass line so that we can then work off of it. You know? Yeah, and you know, I remember, so th there's the bass line is really in all these, them, all of these being iconic bass lines, recognizable, very integral, if not the actual melody or could be argued as such. But we always want to remember that bass lines, even fancy ones like this, are the foundation at any kind of vertical moment mm of what the harmonic interpretation is above that. So by that I mean that even if on this one it's the C minor and then when it goes to F minor. Yeah. But, so that's like an F minor over C. Totally. So you don't have to play that. I mean if you're playing solo piano like this, you don't have a bass player, you probably would. But you want to be able to hear that and use that for your yeah. improvisation. So there's like that foundation of the harmony and all the wonderful possibilities that that includes. And I always remember, um, I didn't understand at the time because I was young and dumb. That's my excuse. But when I uh, had the, the great fortune and benefit of playing with Betty Carter uh, back in 1991, she would, like, I noticed it was so important for her to be able to hear the bass. Like, more than the piano. Like, you think a singer, oh, you want to, it's a trio. You want to hear the piano. And, you know, I would always be like, I'll make sure she can hear me and I'm playing the right stuff. And she wanted to hear everything. But, like, she had to hear the bass mm -hmm. because... Betty was an improviser, you know, always. And so she wanted to hear that foundation, not just what the chord was, but where the bass player was, if it was in a line like this or yeah. if it was just another place they were going or whatever, yeah. to build, you know, these cascades of harmony for her to choose the melodies on top of that. You know, hear that, feel that foundation, and then build on top she of it. She was such a master. And you can hear that in her, in her singing as well. But, I mean, just to go off on a little tangent on why that's so wise to do, for the the vocalist or the person who really is on the top of the sound yes to to want to hear most the bottom of the sound because yeah. what that bottom does it affects mostly what you do like yep. and you can change what you're doing to make it even better and everything in the middle i mean it matters as we i mean to yeah. us it matters a great deal of course of course but like those that relationship between the bass line and the melody is the relationship everything in the middle is harmony but those two things are really outlining what's happening yeah absolutely you know? absolutely so important so important Cool. So next up, no, uh, there's some more Ron Carter here. This is Freddie Hubbard's Red Clay. This is amazing. If you don't oh, yeah. know this record, a lot of people play this in C minor, which is interesting. I know. You know, because you know why? Easier? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is in C sharp minor, the original. <laughs> Ron's noodling. He's noodling, right? I'm noodling. <laughs> We're all noodling. This is a noodle intro. It's like a it's like a ramen. This is a ramen of a noodle rock jazz. Noodle encouraged oh. Woo! A little major third. Uh. Oh, come on, Freddy. Man, Freddy Hubbard. Joe, this is Joe Henderson. Mm, vibrato. Oh. Oh, welcome to the seventies. What? The 70s. What? Oh. Here's the first time, check it out. Top line there on the chart. And then every other time, it's a little different. 
Herbie on that muted rose. Oh. With the, with the... Is that iconic enough for you? Come on. It's so good. One there's thing. so many great details of this, but really the bass line is the thing. Yeah. It's the glue, right? It's the hook. Yeah. yeah. I think the bass line is catchier than the, than the melody itself. But keep it rolling into the solos because I want okay. you to note something there. That vibrato on the rose. Perfect speed. Yeah, Joe Henderson. Who's playing drums on this one? Lenny White. Yeah. Lenny White. Here, Ron Carter, like you know, mixing it up every time, it's a little different, it's not the same. Ha! So, the changes in the solos are not That's these right. changes. That's party, Two, five, That's party changes, yeah. Oh, they're partying at this era. <laughs> I have a feeling that, that this band knew how to party. Sounds like they knew how to party. I'm just gonna let Peter Martin roll. <laughs> I'm noodling. I'm noodling. Isn't that great? Put some meat sauce on me. I'm a noodle. But that's. But it is something to note, though. So it's good to know the bass line, but it's also good to know that in the original recording, that doesn't mean that you have to do this when you play it. But in the original recording, they went to different changes for the solo. That's right. That little two five. No, that's so part of it. That's part of it. C sharp minor two five to A Absolutely. major. It's a big. It's a big thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> we got people in the it's chat. It's almost saying, like just let it play. We've, we've got. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot. I know I saw you on the radio. Hey. And all that was a little later. Da, 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 uh, Scott, what? Uh, what? Sorry. Keep it rolling. It keep it rolling. They meant keep us rolling or keep the Freddy? I know. They wanted to hear you. Oh, okay. No, they so, wanted to hear Freddy. Next up, man, we dealt with this in, in our Herbie episode last week about, uh, I think this was your pick for Greatest Road Solo, but this is by far one of the most iconic <laughs> bass lines <laughs> <ever>. <laughs> This is another bass line. If you start playing this bass line, there's no doubt about what's you going on. You are going to Funky Town. Uh -uh. Come on. And drums, <laughs> and that. you're in. I love that you put that. And groove. <laughs> and clavinet, get ready, clavinet. I think clavinet's next. Wait. Uh, and we are in. No, not yet. Okay. Keep it out. Whoa. Sounding good, Mike Clark. Sounding good. And here we go. And the three and the four. Mr. Martin's open. Well, that's up guitar, in here. huh? And wow, wow. <laughs> this is another one, man. This is another bass line that. Conducting the classics. As simple as it is, you hear played wrong quite a bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's only six, seven notes. How do people play this one wrong? Really? Oh, they play it badly. It ba or what? No. Oh, without the precision. You'll hear this. You might hear. Oh, come or on. Or you might hear. I don't like the interpretation. Or you might hear. Oh, like, you know, on, they no. do the same thing twice. It's understandable. Just learn the real one. That's all. But you know what? This This is very important that this one be played. Correctly, it's so simple, it's but because be so you got go do ba 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 do ba ba. So basically, you got do da, boom ba. Like that's that that's the connection of that upper melody. So don't yeah. mess it up with like disconnecting them in a way. Yeah, you got to keep it keep it true, man. This yeah. is it's, that's this is another one, just like a night in Tunisia. This is another one where this is. It, this has to be as equal weight with the melody of the yeah. tune. I mean, this is part of the tune. If you played that on a different tune, it's not like people would. It's not like this. It's not like, like you could play this on multiple tunes, right? Right. Right. Ba -ba. Yeah. Oh, ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba, squee down. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. Like that. But if you tried to do this on a different tune, but it wasn't right. chameleon, right. now you're doing a mashup. You know what I mean? No, right? that's a mashup. No. no, no, I'm showing what you wouldn't want to do. You definitely wouldn't no. want to do that. But you know what? On a serious note, boo do boo do go uh. Like the the trick with this and what makes it 
iconic. Like this is sort of the inner baseball of it that oh we want to know that so we can really nail this. I mean, the, the listener, this means a lot. The bass line starts before Mike Clark comes in, the drummer, right? Yeah. But the precision of those do do of those, do you have that in there? Yeah, you got it. This, with the sixteenth note syncopation. Yep. That's what I thought you were gonna say. That's what some people mess up. Some people are like boo do boo boom 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 scoo do boom 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 boom. You know where it's like it's only dealing with the eighth note syncopation right, without right, the right. do do. Like so, you have to already be here. Yeah, you got to be there already. You got to be in Funky Town. Don't be don't be chilling in Ledoux or Clayton. <laughs> Big shout out to o, the O2, but come on. The O2. Do, the O3, whatever it is. Because that And so that's already established. And so when the drums come in and the guitar and the clap and all that. This is another one to practice playing along with the record because you're just going to be doing this forever. You're, it's going to be nine minutes of doing this. Yeah. But know? again, just to reemphasize, so make sure you get that. Do, and you can practice like this. Do, do, boo, do, 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 and stop there. Chill. One, two, three. Oh, do, 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 do. Because do, 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 like it's a different. It's do, 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 up, down. 16th note, 8th note, right? Mm. Because when you... Ah, I messed that one up. Ah, see, when you start playing other stuff, it's hard. So you got to lock that in. And so when you do start practicing two hands, leave those breaks in between. Like, that's how you get to that point. Yeah, you get lots of repetition. You can close that gap down eventually, but you just yep. need some time with it first yeah. to lock it in. But great, if you, if you kind of hear it rhythmically a little bit without that precision, it's not going to be bad, but that's when you're kind of like, wow, it's not quite, what, what am I not doing right? I got the nose. Yeah. You got to get the vibe. And that's, get the vibe. And it's locked in with that rhythm. That's All what right. makes it iconic. That's what makes it iconic. Yes. Yeah, man. Uh, so our final That's one. what makes it a... A measure of clarity of iconography. I don't know. I don't think that's okay. what you think it I means. Think, I don't think it is. Our last one. Sounds fancy. You got the music up? We yes, have one sir. more. One more. So we're chugging away here through time. I was trying to think of something a little bit more modern. Thanks. And All this old stuff. I thought of this. Roy Hargrove. Ah, we know we me. like this. We know we like this. this. And this has become an iconic bass line. This is another one that if you start this at a modern jam session, everybody knows what's about to go down. This is uh, one of the great moments. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to let it play. You play. You noodle along, bud. You noodle along if you want. I'm just let you set it up. Why are we letting the bass player set these things up? Yeah, this is Let's listen to the real thing. Uh. Uh, Gerald Clayton. Is this Gerald Clayton? This is Gerald yeah. Clayton. Montez Coleman on the drums. Oh. There's that 60th note. Uh, on that F. Such a great solo. Gerald Clayton, man. Yeah. That was a great master class. Danton Bowler on the bass for this one. Danton Bowler. Any relation to Phil Bowler, do we know? I had no idea. Phil Bowler, great bass player from the 80s. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. It's a good question. It's a good question. But, uh, yeah, that whole band, man. Montez and Gerald and Danton just holding it down. Boom, so good. That's real important for those. Again, we've got a little bit of interplay between the eighth note and the sixteenth note, some divisions, and um, well, and, and that um, gets placed in different places sometimes. Yeah, and yeah. then Montez is always and Jer and you know, like there's a lot of interplay off of that as being a downbeat beat eighth note, and then a great opportunity for some upbeat sixteenth note syncopation there. Totally, yeah, totally, yeah. They nail that chord. It's great. 
And this, so this baseline is a little, has some other, uh, other features that are of interest that we haven't seen with the other ones in that its iconicness is probably wrapped up around its direct connection with the harmonic movement yep. it, as opposed to like being a more of a singable, although you can certainly do, 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 do. like, because you've got, it's like just, def, it's defining and moving um, diatonically really within the harmony, right? So if we look at A flat major. But you're right. This, so this isn't so much like a, mo, a melodic bass line as right. it is following the chord changes. Exactly. And it's like a- And a, almost like predefining them a little bit. It's predefining and grooving off of the chord changes. Whereas, predefining them. Predefining, whereas you're right. The other ones were all sort of m very melodic sort of within bigger chord movements, but this is really just outlining chord changes in a groovy way. But I still think because the way the song starts with the bass line, this yeah. has become an iconic bass line. Oh, no, and absolutely. I'm just saying that it's a little bit different use, a different pathway to get to that for icon sure. way. But it is important for everybody to know this bass line. For the things like you just said, for that, like, so that when you hit that, uh, like, you can hit yeah. around that kind of stuff. I hit the wrong chord there, but... No, it's it's jazz. There's no wrong chords. Yeah, yeah. No, but the, but the, you know what it is too. That's all wrapped up in, with how the architecture of the the harmony, even more so than the baseline, because you got this is all up until that point. Everything's diatonic, and then remember on the other two, like we know Roy loves in his compositions to have that place. Yeah, totally. he'll end. Well, he ends it on this, on that, you know, that sharp eleven, yeah, yeah, sharp yeah. nine, whatever it is. But that's it's as much about building up something that's grooving. It's all within here. But just like with syncopation, you got to leave it at some point. That's your big opportunity for drama. The baseline drives it on this one. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome stuff. So those are our seven iconic bass lines. Uh, and why you should know those iconic bass lines. Like I said, there's a PDF here in the description. Download that. That's yours for free to take. Uh, we also have a Spotify playlist. I'll add the link here yes. after we're done. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, man. This was fun. Super Seven fun. iconic bass lines and why you should learn them. Why you must learn them. <laughs> then you will know them. Until next time. You'll hear it. Oh, yeah, folks. Peter's going to keep going here. Thanks, everybody. Let us know if you have any questions about the episode or anything else. We're, uh, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, Peter. I know. That was a tight episode. I liked it.